This new camera confuses me because it doesn't beep when it turns on the way the old one did. Anyway, before we get into the Q&A, oh, that's heavy. MacBook Pro unboxing. <laughs> Right, as promised, there is gonna be the Q&A coming up in a minute because it is now eight o'clock. I've only just got home from work. It's been a parents' evening. I remember back when I used to have a real job when it used to be completely normal to get home from work at like half six, seven o'clock, do that six days a week, and it would be completely fine. For whatever reason, since I've been a teacher, if I get home after four o'clock, it feels like I've been out digging trenches all day. Teaching makes you go soft, it's disgraceful, but we'll probably, we may get into that in the Q&A. We probably won't, I haven't looked at the questions yet, unless anyone specifically asked whether teaching makes you soft. We're not getting back into that, but what we will do is have a little look at the final piece of the jigsaw. The MacBook Pro has arrived. For those of you who are getting unboxing fatigue, and I'm almost getting to the point where I'm getting unboxing fatigue because as you can see, I've had it out of the box and out of the cellophane off camera. I've got a coffee spillage on the back of it already. So there's a note not to put it on this little table where I spilled coffee a few minutes ago. But I was all set to just unbox this off camera because we've done so much unboxing recently and I don't want the channel to become, look at all the shiny new things Kev's got. Remember, there's a purpose to all of it and the purpose is improving the quality of the content we can produce across the channels and that's what this is all working towards but this is the final piece of the jigsaw by far and away the most expensive of all the pieces of kit but potentially even though the new camera is making a massive difference hopefully you can hear me much clearer the picture is much clearer than it has been previously even though that's making a massive difference this is going to make an even bigger difference possibly not a difference that you lot are going to notice because it's going to be more of a behind the scenes difference but th whereas the new camera the new lighting all that stuff is going to help with the quality of what we're producing this beautiful piece of equipment is all about quantity because what this means is that this is now my vlog machine so i can as soon as i finish recording for the day get the sd cards plugged into this because i did get the older version that still has the sd card holes on it rather than the stupid new one with touch bar that only has thunderbolt ports so somewhere on here there you go on that side we still have proper sd card support and plus more importantly the apple still lights up and we've got i mean it still has got thunderbolt on there but it's got some proper usb stuff as well but this will allow me to when i come back in from the garage in the evening i can get all of the vlog content on here. Um, because I'm still a teacher at the moment, I was able to get it at education pricing, which also meant I could get a cut price version of Final Cut Pro as well. So in addition to my existing um, Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, which means I'm gonna have Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and all that stuff on here, I'm also gonna have Final Cut Pro as well. So I'm gonna experiment between Final Cut and Premiere over the next week or so. But the plan is, by the time the garage is up and running next week as the new studio, this as a machine will be up and running as well. I'm not gonna get it up and running tonight, it will take too long. But I will then be able to come in in an evening, put all the vlog content on here, edit the vlog together, potentially even whilst playing Football Manager on the other machine, and then leave this to render the vlog, whilst I can then edit the Football Manager video on the other machine, and then get that rendering when I'm back on here and uploading and doing all of the faffing about with that, and basically swap back and forth between the two machines over the course of the evening, so that what at the moment is a job that starts Assuming I've played all the football manager I need to play, it starts at about 8 p.m. with recording that day's videos, so any finishing touches that need to be made to the vlog, and then recording the football manager stuff, and then it's like two or three hours of editing because there's lots of waiting around between the two. It should take that process down to maybe an hour, hour and a half, depending on how long the vlog takes to edit, which then will hopefully give me time to bring in an extra game, which won't be Persona 5, because I don't know if you've seen all the fuss about Persona 5, and how you basically can't stream it, can't do videos with it past a certain point, and there's no point starting a series I can't finish. Forget Total Extreme Wrestling ever existed. So it is an unboxing, so we'll have a quick look. There you go, that's what a MacBook Pro looks like. Who knew? I think there's a screen behind the paper. I'll check when you aren't looking, just in case there's not. Next time you see this, it will be covered in the famous stickers that I bought 
one of the first purchases. It's just going to be absolutely covered in stickers. I need to find a way to make sure the glowy apple still shows through though. And then in the box, as usual, because it's apple, nice and pretty, charger cable, multiple parts of, and a little tiny instruction book in case you don't know what a computer does. That is the new MacBook Pro. These two have been silently watching that. Oh, done. <laughs> These two, the two, oh, she's got a spot she can't possibly be on camera. They've been silently watching. I don't know why. It's not as if it's the first MacBook you've ever seen. Why is it so exciting? You didn't watch any of the other unboxings. I watched Because I don't have a laptop. It's very pretty. I have many. Yes, I know that. Perhaps you should start a YouTube channel so that you can get a laptop for yourself. I do have a YouTube channel. Don't subscribe to her, you're too old. So Q&A then, one of the sproggets has disappeared because it's not interesting enough for her, the other one is too lazy to move. I have loads of questions again, thank you to everybody who got your questions in. I don't know if we'll have time to get through them all, I'm going to try and rapid fire them a little bit. If I don't get to your question today, then please feel free to submit it the next time we do a Q&A. Just submit it a bit earlier, we'll try and go through them in order. But there'll be at least three more Q and A's over the next six weeks or so because of when parents' evenings occur. And it's, it's the only way we can throw an episode together in like an hour. So if we start from the top of this list and just see where we get some questions. Matt 8 Griggs 15, did I watch WrestleMania? Uh, I've watched most of WrestleMania. I didn't stay up to watch it on Sunday night. I have been watching it. I've watched a couple of hours an evening, Monday and Tuesday. I'll probably watch a little bit more later on while I'm waiting for rendering to happen and waiting for this new laptop to set up. So. I haven't watched it all yet, but I will have done, probably by the time you see the answer to that question. Andrew Barter wants to know what are the key things I've learnt since starting the vlog. You won't know where your channel is going. If you are a content creator yourself, you won't necessarily know the direction your channel is going when you get to episode one. We're doing this big relaunch next week when we get to episode 100 of the vlog, because if you look back at the first five or 10, even 20 episodes of this vlog, it's, it's a completely different animal now to what it was then. And that's because when I started out, the genuine reason I was starting is because I wanted a way to track a weight loss thing. And I suddenly found out that I was enjoying vlogging so much that it actually became more about the vlogging, less about the weight loss. And now it's the point where, okay, that weight loss thing, that's completely on the back burner now. And the vlog is front and center and it's gonna be this thing that I'm gonna, I wanna do long term. So I had no plans for that to happen when I first started out. So the big thing I've learned is you have to be flexible with it and willing to roll with the punches a little bit and listen to the audience, try and get, a, get a, a handle on what they enjoy. You will never be able to predict the videos that go big. I don't understand why my biggest video on this channel is from Birmingham Comic Con. Resed is a much bigger event, I think, and no one's interested in that video. The stuff about Sproglet, that was a surprise when that exploded. We weren't sure whether to include his stuff in the channel at all for a little while. If you look, if you watch through the vlog chronologically, for the first probably two or three weeks, we barely mentioned the fact that there are kids in existence. Anna's barely featured. And it, suddenly, it started to become obvious that the videos that people really loved were the ones that were more about the family. So that's become more part of the vlog. The whole stuff about me talking about business stuff I thought that was going to be a massive hit and it's actually turned out people aren't really that interested in it and the view counts are much lower on that one so there's no way of predicting what people are going to enjoy there's no way of predicting what you're going to enjoy with the content you produce so yeah the big thing that I've learned since starting the vlog is if it is something you're interested in doing you've got to be prepared to be a bit flexible with it and not really know where it's going to end up and as much as I try and plan ahead like 100, 200 episodes now, like we talked earlier in the week. I have no idea where this vlog's gonna be in a year's time, two years time. It could be anything, it could be nothing, who knows what's gonna happen, but we'll figure it out along the way. Joe Mags wants to know, Kev, as a teacher, what's your opinion on the changes to the GCSEs? As a teacher, I don't like the changes because they've made them harder, so it's harder for teachers to do their job, it's harder for the students to get good grades. As a person, I'm kind of in favour of it because I think it was getting to the point where I know as a teacher there were people getting grades that they didn't deserve because they could just keep churning out coursework units despite not really understanding subjects and there was certainly as a computing teacher there was ICT qualifications a few years ago where you could just keep churning out coursework and end up with four A stars at GCSE 
and all your other subjects are getting like C's and D's in it. And if you've got a situation where something like that's allowed to happen, then obviously there needs to be some kind of reform. People should have fairly level grades across all subjects. I know people are going to be slightly better at some stuff than others, but any system where you've got someone getting multiple A stars in something and then failing other stuff, that suggests some of it's too hard, some of it's too easy. Then changes to the new system, in theory, will make everything a little bit fairer for everybody. Yes, there's not going to be so many people getting top grades, but that's fine. The purpose of the qualifications is to decide who the really, really smart people are, and then who's the next tier down, and then who's the, the next tier down. And looking at it from someone who's employed people in the past, all your GCSEs are really for is to get you into sixth form or college. And then all six form of college is for us to get you into university. And even university, all that's for is getting you your first job. And from then on, it's just about how good you are at what you do. So don't get bogged down in stressing out about GCSEs. As long as you do well enough to do the thing you want to do next, then that's fine. It really doesn't matter whether you get an A or a B or a four or a six or whatever it is on the new system. Just as long as, you, as long as you're keeping your options open for your next step, then that's all you need to do because then you're worrying about the next step and just keep progressing one step at a time. And you, if you work hard and you're good at what you do, you'll get where you want to be eventually anyway. So the exams don't even really matter. If you're one of my students watching that, disregard all of that, your exams be all and end all, pass them or else. Craig Hadley wants to know where did I get the, where did I get the license for the intro music I used for the Football Manager series? Um, that was made for us back when uh, we did the Best Thing From podcast years ago. It was made for us by a musician and given to us, so we own it. I think officially as a podcast we owned it. I don't own it, but I'm part owner of it ish. And yeah, it's not available anywhere else. It was made specifically for us. It was a friend of a friend and got sorted out that way. So. Yeah, it's not the normal route to it. The music I use on the vlog, I just get off SoundCloud and make sure I credit the people in the uh, in the description. Alex Graham wants to know, do I miss Dwight Gale at Posh? Not really, he was only with us for a season and we replaced him with someone even better. Ooh, controversial. And leads into a question from Aaron Warriner, do I miss Britta Sambalonga? He was the one who was even better who came in to replace Gale. Again, not so much, we only had him for a season. He was a bit of a one-trick pony. He was just a goal scorer, didn't really contribute much to the rest of the game. And ultimately, none of them were as good as Craig McHale Smith or George Boyd. And they're the ones I really miss and will forever miss because the like of them we will never see again in posh shirts, probably. Um, Mega Corey1977 wants to know what do I like about editing? Um, I like taking a whole bunch of nonsense and creating a story out of it. I think it's loads of fun. I would like to be able to spend more time editing. Hopefully the new setup will allow me to spend more time on the actual edits, but less time on the process as a whole, because I'm not going to have so much waiting around involved. It's one of the reasons why I've made the change, because the actual edit is loads of fun, because you actually see it coming together into this proper thing from a bunch of junk that you just threw together throughout the day. And that's a really cool process. We are running out of time. Let's Let's quickly do these. These are going to be one word answers now where possible. Dominic, Dominic Ellen, you've mentioned you're a big Peter United fan on the vlog. Have you ever thought of doing a match day vlog? I have. Either as part of the main daily vlog or separate. Yes, it would be. A little extension on that. I haven't been to a match for like six months, so that's why I haven't done that. But as soon as I go to a match, I'll do that. Richard Biggs, how long is your current FM17 save going to, go, going to last for until I reach the goal? So become a legend at a club or win the Champions League or something like that, Hall of Fame, I don't know, a little while. He also wants to know, I mentioned a third channel um, on yesterday's vlog, I think. When is that going to start? Not sure. No rush. It's education based. I've missed the boat this year. It will be in place for September, hopefully before, but I'm not in any urgent rush to make it happen before then. And lastly, from Loki Doki, he wants to know um, where do I see myself and the channels in five years' time? I mean, we said a few minutes ago about not knowing where it's going to be in one or two years' time. Five years' time, I would very much like to think that I am a full time YouTuber. I know I've given up my job already with that being the end goal, but realistically, I'm going to be a full time carer who earns another chunk of income from writing books and then a tiny chunk of income from YouTube. And of all those things, the thing that I'm most passionate about and I most enjoy is YouTube. It's also the thing that pays by far the least. So I'd like to think in five years time, I'm still doing it, whether I'm doing it professionally or not. Hopefully I will be, but hopefully I'm still doing it and I'm still enjoying doing it. 
but it would be nice to think that YouTube in itself is enough to pay the bills and leave a little bit left over so that the other things become optional. That would be an awesome situation. Where do I see the channels? Uh, the main channel, the gaming channel, in fact, watch the word in there, if we're going five years in the future, I would expect the gaming channel won't be the main channel anymore. I think this one will eventually become the main channel. I enjoy this one more, I think this one is better. Obviously I started it a year later and it has fewer subscribers and fewer views at the moment, but it's growing much faster than the gaming channel has done. So I think this one will be the main channel. I think I'll, I'd like to think I'll still be vlogging, if not every day, then regularly and producing little documentary bits here as well. I've, I've got this idea in my head that I want to do a series of, of short films about autism. Um, I want to do some stuff about education. So there's bits like that that are going to slot in here as well on top of the vlog, probably on this channel. Gaming wise, I'll still want to be doing a football manager save unless the game goes away, but feel, mixing it in with lots of other gaming stuff as well. I don't ever see football manager leaving the gaming channel, but I don't necessarily want it to be the be all and end all. Re putting it really bluntly, there's a very firm ceiling in place as a football manager YouTuber that I could do it for the next five years and struggle to get to 50,000 subscribers. That's not full time subscriber level. Whereas if I have a nice mix of games and strike the right games at the right time and get the right bits of audience, I can grow faster and also potentially bring more people into Football Manager who wouldn't try it unless it was on a channel that they were already enjoying for other stuff. So I want, I want hundreds of thousands of subscribers. I want to be pushing towards a million in five years time. It would be amazing but that's not gonna happen just from Football Manager. But Football Manager, I've said it lots of times before, I'll continue to say it, it's a game I've played pretty much every day for the last 20 plus years. I'm not gonna stop playing that game every day. So for as long as I'm playing it every day, I might as well record the content and put it out there because plenty of people are enjoying what I'm doing. But it won't be the thing that the whole YouTube thing is built around. So. I know there's not really any specifics there, but I think that's a big question that will probably be a vlog in its own at some point. But yeah, five years time, I wanna be doing it full time and I want everything to be growing massively and have grown massively. What? But that is your luck. I'm getting shouted at and told that I have to go outside and do my football manager stuff because I'm too loud in here for bedtime now. I've got to read a story to the other one as well. So at some point I might turn this laptop on. It might not even be today, but hopefully you'll start to see an increase in production over the next few weeks because of this new setup and also because of the fact that I'm on holiday very soon as well so I can step up the pace a little bit as well. I hope you've enjoyed that. I think I answered every question. If I didn't, please don't be afraid to resubmit it next time and tell me off in the comments if I missed you out. Um, it certainly wasn't deliberate. I think I went through all of them. So thank you very much for those who did ask questions and thank you very much for watching.